Now we're good. Okay. What's up, y'all? So, last we left off, we were fighting tree shits and some doggos. Yes. And the fight goes actually pretty well. One dog tries to get away, and we're like, fuck, not happen- that not- not no, <laughs> not doing that again. Like hey, you motherfucker. <laughs> not today. Not today. So, a couple of them exploded. A couple of them. So, wait, that was from the next fight. So now, yeah. Alsan is checking out the dogs and sees like smooth black fur. Thinks it could be related to the skulk, but she doesn't know, and she doesn't like not knowing. But it's like no shadows are around it when it dies. But it's like maybe the coat is grabbing onto the shadows. We don't know. It's it's fucking dark. Uh, Kane picks up his rusty swords again, still not sure what he's gonna do with them. Uh, Calder heals up the party, and we continue on into the forest. Over the next hour, we just continue on. We realize there is no light in the distance, and it's pure quiet. So the sky gets darker, um, snow starts falling, and we sort of stop in this clearing, and we realize, oh hey, and Alaris realizes, oh hey, this is like, the, like, deepest I've been in the forest. Oh my god. So we go, hmm. Let's, instead of continuing on, let's go to sleep. So we watch. Nothing happens in the watch except, like, Alaris sees an owl. That's pretty cool. He tries to tame it. It doesn't work. <laughs> At no. all. But no other no. event happens. And then when we wake up on the 4th of Windhowl. So Kane cooks a bit. We check the weather report. Um, Alaris tells Asana about the owl. And she's like, what the fuck? So... We start going in towards the center. Kane gets a compass, which is amazing bag pick. So we continue on for a little bit. We don't get entirely lost. And we start going through the trees and we see green. And Asana sees metal. And we're like, oh? So we go on and even like there's a lot of growth that's not native to the wood. And we find this depression in the snow. So like a small cliff that will drop off. There's a large stone sword in the, in the center, and there is vines around it. They are called razor vines. Self-explanatory, but Kane wants sword. <laughs> so Asana goes to float above it, and she's a mound of snow swell. Things come from it, so there are more shadow dogs and more skeletons with um, swords and leathers. It's an issue. And a tree shit. No, there's are there tree shits? There was there was a tree shit. There were there two vine blades. Of... Yes. Okay. There were that two appeared out of the razor vine. One of them. Ah, yeah. No, those yeah. were blights. Those were like different blight things. Those weren't tree shits. Vine shits, then. Vine shits, yes, please. So we get through them pretty quickly. Alaris realizes the skeleton people are probably people he's known before, but, you know, we're just gonna uh, dip by that. So we try a couple times to get the sword. Calda finally tries and gets it. It is a really nice blade, and it's like all vine related. There's some cool art, and Kane decides, and we decide like, yo, Kane's the only one of us that doesn't really have magic. Let's go. And so, Kane also does. Kane get all the old short swords from the skeletons or no? You got those, yeah. I believe okay, he you got did. those, yeah. And then we continue on for a little bit. Alsana finds the owl. Or an owl, or a living thing, and that's when, where we ended. As we continue on into the Soren Wood. Yes. All right. Now, uh, basically housekeeping. Uh, some of you did level up last time, but you have not yet taken a rest. So until you do so, um. Ba uh, basically, pretend that the special abilities or any spells or anything that you got from leveling up don't currently exist. So, right. kind of keep that in the back of your head. Okay. Are we keeping health um, different too, or keep health keep health where you've leveled it up to? That shouldn't be an issue before you rest next. Okay. Because, as you set off after this curiosity, this single living thing that doesn't seem to be attacking you in the middle of this darkened forest as it flutters from one tree to another, swiveling its head around, staring at you with big round, almost luminous eyes you start uh, trudging deeper into the woods 
Um, the owl continues to do its hop from tree to tree. Uh, sometimes it goes just one tree to the next, a distance of five, maybe ten feet. Other times you see it fly almost to the limits of your vision before finding a perch. Every time it lands, it turns and it looks at you and it watches. Uh, Elsana will kind of like put her hand up to like have everyone kind of slow down. Mm -hmm. And she will drop the um, drop the spell level for speak with animals. Okay. I don't have it on a sheet right now, but I did mention it last time that you she prepared it. You did. All right. And uh, basically for 10 minutes, if I recall, you are able to speak with animals and understand their, um, so to speak, speech in turn. The owl is just sitting on a branch, uh, about 20 feet ahead, 10 feet up, watching you. Uh, you there, feathered one. It blinks. You can understand me, yes? Follow. And it turns and flies further. <sighs> and what? Looks back to everyone else. Only she can understand it. Um, yeah, the rest of and... you just heard. Are you, uh. It seems intent on having us follow it. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's the only other wildlife here, so. I mean, yeah. Why not? It's an only lead. It's our only sure. lead. I don't know. I don't know what you're clicking, but it's audible. Sorry. Oh, not the first time today we followed a bird brain. Let's go. Well then. Sly comments aside, let's go. As they're going, Elsano will just kind of like lightly call after it, just like, Where do you intend to lead us? You see it flutter to another branch without answering, then it lands, turns back, blinks at you. And another hoot. This one, you gather a meaning of home. She goes, are you in need of help, or...? Another little... another little... Uh, not quite a hoot, more of a quiet chur. And the meaning is... almost a not quite. It's a no, but not a hard no. And then not just really. a repetition of follow. Just, we're following, we're following. And it leads you on. You walk for probably an hour. Your course is taking you a bit further south than your original chosen path had been. She might kind of call out after it, like during that walk, just... Should we expect any monsters? Any sort of fight? Monsters everywhere now. What about where you're leading us? Vine is safe. Follow. Vine is safe. Shrugs and carries on. Just repeats a couple of sounds and uh, movements, because beast, uh, beast speech, so to speak, is... A multi-layered thing, but you get the sense of home and safe again. Well, it seems to have good intentions, and it's... For me to understand it, it must be some sort of beast. Right, so for that first hour, as you're following, um, 
at that point it stops in a tree, um, shakes its feathers, peers down and hoots. By this time your speak with animals is worn off. Mm-hmm. And it uh, kind of flutters towards um, a uh, a n- another of those dips down in the forest floor, another variation of terrain. And um, whereas before you were heading almost in a straight line uh, south and a little bit uh, east, as I suppose Kane is probably checking his compass, um, this depression runs and curves almost straight east, and the owl seems to be trying to lead you into that not quite a ravine it's not narrow or sheer enough for that but a channel of sorts in the ground uh, surrounded by trees and thick with snow it actually flutters onto the ground hops a few times looks back and then flies up into a tree again and she gives like a glance down towards that direction, see if she can pick anything else out. Okay, uh, go ahead and do a perception check. Alright, perception of 22, and you remembered your guidance, so plus yes, two so to that. Yes, so 24. 24. Alright, um, you don't notice much immediately like the first vicinity it's just more trees more natural terrain uh but you look a little bit further and you realize that one of the um one of the shapes further down the ravine uh just barely peeking into view around a little bend is though coated in snow it doesn't seem quite as smooth or natural uh it seems a little bit more um, a little bit more squared off, and as you maybe scoot a little bit closer and peer around that bend, you see, again, covered in snow and ice and frost, a little bit listing, uh, but you see the front of a humanoid-made structure. Very small, but recognizable all the same. Made of stone or wood? Um, well, given that perception, even from here you can tell it seems to be built of logs laid over each other, uh, probably packed with something in between the cracks in order to keep the weather out, you would suppose. Um, you'd have to get closer to pick up more details, but if you do, then, uh, you might, uh, start picking up on there is what seems to be the at least outline of a shuttered window. Some things are hard to make out given the snow that's caked in uh, across the outside um, and the ice hanging from the roof, uh, but... And you said this kind of whole area is kind of a similar indent to the ground? Kind of a similar indent to the ground, yes. And in fact, this structure seems nestled straight flush up against um, kind of the tallest bit of uh, ridge in this immediate area. Uh, can she get much of a guess at which way the wind blows here? Basically, is the is it built in such a place to kind of be under the, like, wind? For the most part. Um, most of the caked snow is on the side of the structure as opposed to what you would recognize as the front where you see the window and an outline of a door. Um, you can also see that there is, um, on what probably is the roof of the structure, the way it slopes from the uh, side of the ridge out over the um, front and sides of this, uh, this building, there's from one corner growing a spindly little sapling and you can see from the way that the tree is bent a little bit with the wind that um any wind that comes down here is probably channeled towards that side not the front of the building can she take a minute to ritual cast speak with animals again 
You could. Um, by now that owl has fluttered on to perch on that roof, uh, kind of sitting feathery little lump in the snow. Yep, she'll just tell the group to hold up a second, but I think we might have found some sort of residence. The owl calls it home. Hmm. Just give me a minute to get something. She's kind of like drawing some runes on her, like on the inside of her wrist with uh, the kind of like black soot from the bag she has. You take a minute, and as you do, the owl just sits and stares at you. Uh, you complete the spell, feel it take hold inside of your own mind. And she'll just kind of start to float down the descent, but just... So this is home, then? Yes. And it's safe. Safe, yes. You're not, you're not lying, are you? Fine is dark in winter, but still safe. Nothing disturbs. Do you have kind of like motion for the group to follow? Uh, how far is the house from where they are? Um, going down the depression, I'd say it's maybe, uh, it's not too far. You can get there in essentially a turn, 30 feet, maybe 40 at most, from the entrance of the depression. She'll just kind of float on the broom over. Okay. And you get closer, and uh, you start picking up more and more details. Um, I'll just keep that perception roll for the ease of everything. Um, and you start see noticing a few more things. Uh, beyond the small tree that took root in the corner of the roof, um, you see that some of the daub that used to fill cracks between the logs seems to have fallen out and left some gaps behind. Uh, the door is listed and warped in its frame, so there's another triangular gap at the top and the bottom. The shutters are in a similar state, though it seems that some sort of creeping ivy has grown over them uh, so thickly that it's held them in place, though the ivy is currently leafless, you can just see the um, patterning of the vines, given the season. Did you um, take a guess if it's just a regular kind of ivy, or...? Um, go ahead and roll a nature check. If you want to start investigating plant life. <laughs> 21 plus your guidance roll. 24. Oh, another 24. Again. Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly common type of creeping ivy. This one is not actually dangerous, or um, it's not as pesky. Unless you want to consider, like, long-term effects on things like stonework and buildings sometimes. Um, however, not too magic -y, though. Yeah, not, not really magic -y. Pretty, but not magic-y. Um, but between that and your perception, you also notice a different kind of vine. Um, in the, the rafters, where they hang, it hangs over the front of the house, kind of uh, in trailing loops. It's a vine that you are now familiar with, um, because you harvested a little bit of it mm. from the tree outside of Walton. And by the way, your lamp is has gone dull and dead by now. In all likelihood, it's been more than twenty four hours, I believe. But yeah, um, up and goes. yeah you see the uh, familiar shape of the vine. The uh, leaves holding on through winter, and you recognize it as a dormant for the season lamp vine. She kind of like runs her fingers over a piece of it, and she's like, "Huh, I thought in here I was thinking it'd be a nice place to plant it already." And she'll look up to the owl. Are you the only one who calls this home, or are there more uh, residents? Only me. Sometimes family. But now only me. 
Another thing you might notice is that the building, the window, the height of the door frame, seems to have been built to the proportions of one of the smaller folk. Halfling, gnome, dwarf perhaps. Um, so any of the taller members of the party might have to duck a little bit to stand un well, they wouldn't have to duck under the uh, overhang in front of the house, but um, their, their foreheads might hit the door frame, be about level with that. She looks up. Well, may we come in, then? Yes. And she'll lightly try the door. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really move at first, but given the severe warping that it seems to have undergone in the frame, it might take a little bit of heft to get through. She'll just kind of give a lean into it herself and kind of breathe in, breathe out. Yeah, guidance and give me athletics. Alright, she's not good, but we'll see. Alright, 8 plus a d4. Plus 4, 12. Um, you don't get it all the way, but you do actually, like, get it to scrape a little bit open. Um, there's a gap, not quite enough to... Uh, reach through just yet, but you did budget. Mm. Calda, I've made it loose for you. You can do the rest. Alright, I could have done it from the beginning, but you got good arms on you as well. Calda's gonna try and just open the door a bit more. Yep. Roll athletics. 24. 24. Yeah. Uh, with hardly that much effort. Uh, maybe it was loosened for you, maybe uh, maybe it's just your strong halfling arms. Um, maybe you're just at the just the right height to put pressure on the right place. Uh, you put your shoulder <laughs> to the door and just with a scrape and a lurch it suddenly flies open as it comes unstuck and the interior is open to you. It is dark, it is cold, uh, it is recognizably a, a living area. Uh, those with That's a, not the worst. yeah, those with a little bit of a little bit more dark vision. Uh, there is light filtering through this doorway, but it is fairly narrow, and the inside is again dark. Um, you would see further, and you would see that this area is actually larger on the inside than it appeared to be just from the outside of the structure because it's constructed half from the logs and half cut from the earth and stone of the ridge that it backs up against. Um, hmm. You see towards the back that there is a fireplace and a chimney, but it's cold and the pile of logs and kindling behind it uh, looks like it's been untouched for a long time. You can see a simple table and a single stool pushed against the wall there's a wooden bowl and cup, a plate nearby. There's a closed cabinet next to the fireplace, an iron pot hanging over the hearth, a tarnished kettle on the stone beside it. You see some rafters above your heads. They're holding the walls and the ceiling back, but a few of them are cracked and sagging, and in the back half of this home, Roots have broken through some of the cracks, letting dirt spill in, creating water stains down the walls and on the floor. Elsewhere on the walls, uh, there are set some hooks, shelves, some of which are still upright, others are broken on the floor. Um, the ones that are up are, seem to hold uh, small materials, scraps of things, uh, little boxes, um, you can see from just the entrance. Um, there's a crate. Seems to have chunks of perhaps wood inside of it. Um, and uh, on the opposite side of the home, not too far from the door, there's a small bed with a couple of pegs set in the wall above it. Uh, they seem to hold a curved length of wood. And uh, at the foot of the bed, there's a chest. 
There's a perch for a bird standing empty at the head of the bed near the shuttered window. And there's a thin, worn, tattered blanket on the bed that just covers the withered bones of a gnome. Ooh. Oh. Well then, that's graphic. Okay. Uh, first time today. Lozano, walk out. Joey, uh... Oh, should we go lay this one outside? Sorry, what can you say? Um, I'm just gonna turn to Calda and just say, Should we go uh, lay this one to rest outside? I think. We'll leave it yeah, for now. That... Could you ask the owl, maybe? One for one, that, and for another. And just trust me. Do it before we leave. And she'll walk back out and be like, Why bring us here? Memory. Memory? Of what? Forest. You wish to see it return to its former glory? Yes. Would you like to come in? Or is it, uh... Would you prefer not to see things in here? My home once. Not anymore. Well, thank you for sharing. Keep her memory. I know woods are weird for you, but was there a name you heard often? Quill. And just out of character, referring to themselves, right? Um. Possibly? You can roll okay. animal handling in lieu of insight, given that it is an owl. Alright, 11 plus... 1, so 12? 12. Mm, probably. Quill makes sense for a bird. Um, She'll just ask, yours or hers? She said Quill meant me. Would you be okay if I referred to you as the same? Doesn't matter. <coughs> Her memory in wood. Thin, thin wood. Find, remember? Memory in thin wood. One second. Chill. Go and, uh huh. Look around. All right, go in. Um, go ahead and roll. I suppose an investigation, unless there's something uh, in general investigation. If there's an area in particular you'd like to investigate specifically, then say so. She's going to look at. For one, just check the chest. Okay. I guess before even rolling, just is it locked or not? It is not locked. Um, she'll just take a slow open of that. Yeah. Uh, the wood sticks a little bit, uh, not so much because of warping, just the pure age and the rust in the hinges. Uh, it uh, sticks and it squeals as you pry the lid open. Inside you find, uh, at the top, for the most part, just sundry articles of clothing, thin and falling apart as you pick it up, almost. Um, there are some, perhaps, personal items. Uh, a few 
interesting little rocks, uh, dried up ink wells, old but perhaps still usable quill pen or two. Um, and underneath it, there is a, a package, it seems, uh, wrapped in oiled cloth. As you peel that aside, you see the surface of a leather-bound book. Thin wood. Maybe this is what she's talking about. Yep. She'll open it up. Alright. The very first page says, uh, journal. The next page has an entry in small but uh, uneven handwriting. And uh, it begins with a date very nearly 400 years in the past. And it starts with the words, My name is Renata <coughs> Lingenhall, and I'm finally going out on an adventure. <coughs> Sorry. Can we get a quick typo of that name? Yeah. Um, I'll do it in the chat game chat, though oh, it won't you. be visible because of my DM screen. No so, Renala Lingen Hall. And in that first entry, if you kind of scan it, it's uh, her starting out on a little bit of a rambling adventure in the Valley of Majeria with a couple of companions, a human named Turi, a tiefling named Song, and her special animal companion, her owl, Quill. And as you uh, flip through this journal, um, the entries are not a... Uh, you've seen... Um, You've seen books that are, like, dedicated histories. You've read probably some historical journals that were very precise and concise and very regularly written. This, and these are not it. Yeah, this rambles a bit. It jumps from subject to subject, and it jumps from day to day, sometimes month to month. The uh, entries are not rigidly... I will mute you. Sorry, sorry. My dad's watching the game downstairs. Fuck yeah, it. Jesus. Just for the time being. Push to talk. Just push to talk, dude. He's muted Bark. for the time being, mute. but I'll put him. I'll take him off mute once he types in anything. Uh, but as I was saying, the entries do jump around a fair bit. They are not. Um, it doesn't seem that she kept the journal as a rigid thing. It was more a as she thought of things. Uh, but sometimes she'll. She mostly talks about. Um, the things that she and her companions have been doing. Uh, rescuing some lost children, fighting, raiding bands of orcs and goblinoids. As she's uh, kind of scrolling and looking through it, she's like reading a few passages out loud. Yep. And uh, in general, it's just a bunch of good deeds in the defense of the people. And at, uh, at one point, after a gap of a few months, uh, there's an entry where she mentions um, doing something really great to the point that she and her companions were officially acknowledged and were granted rewards from the court of the emperor. Renala turned down title or rank, though her friend Turi accepted the title and became Lord Turi on Bright Mantle, Empire Mage, and Is Song. That that name come to mind to her at all? Has she read about it at all? Um, you can go ahead and do a history check. So, 11 plus 15. 4, 15. Um, he, uh, if you did, pr probably not unless it was, like, a vague footnote or anecdote or just a dry list of nobility that kind of, of certain where age. Have I seen that before? Um, what? That kind of, where have I seen that before? I know I've seen it before somewhere. It might not even be that. It might be more... Oh, uh, that's, that's vaguely familiar. I might have read something. I might have read that or something similar once. Not right. Um, it was never anything really important. It was more... It was more if you'd read, like, 
a either a genealogy or just an accounting list or something, and names just kind of filtered through your mind. Mm. Um, All right. But uh, Song was dubbed a knight, an honorary vassal of the realm, and the three of them were also granted official ownership of the land of Soren Wood under Emperor Hieronymus purview. And she notes um, an entry later that Turian was founding a town, which he named Soren after the wood, though Renala and Song preferred the peace of the forest itself over construction and bustle and new community. Um, after that, the entries grow pretty sparse again, uh, but you kind of glean from them that Turian was getting a little more involved and settled in Sorin, and Song was beginning to settle down herself in another little town, and Renala decided to make a home in the forest and let adventuring fall behind them. And then there's a couple of entries of just sundry little things about how nice the forest was today, or how a storm blew down uh, one of the trees, and she's gonna see about clearing it up to make the path easier to walk. Um, and then it uh, notes in an entry in the year 640 that the emperor died of old age. It's almost a footnote after a record of uh, I gathered some mushrooms today. Then the next one notes that there's been fighting. And Turi was directly supporting the elder of the old emperor's twin sons, and Song was more distantly perhaps, but on the side of the younger of the two. Renala admits in the journal she's not sure which one should rule. That Turi has written to her, expecting her to come and help him raise up the true heir. She ends that entry, still uncertain, not sure what to do, not sure where to go with two friends on two sides, and herself in the forest in the middle, not really dedicated to either. The next entry is months later and notes, sadly, that Turi has passed away in battle. That Song came to visit Renala afterwards that Renala's not noticed before how old her friend seems to be now, still capable of travel. There's gray in her hair and lines on her face. She limps a little from old injuries that never bothered her so much before. Her hands shake sometimes when she's not paying attention. She writes that Song brought her sword, Bramble, and asked Renala's help finding a place to give it up, as she was done fighting for good and wanted to plant the blade where it belonged. Mm. So Renala describes a stone they found and the blessing she asked of the master of the wood, and how the stone parted before the blade and sealed it in place. The next entry is, again, years later. All it says is that song has passed, and Renala visited Bramble for her and cried there. There are more entries, sparse and sporadic, scattered between years. Note for a brief time, around like 850 or so, Renala tried adventuring again, but found that she was getting a little old herself, and it just wasn't the same without her old friends, and nobody really remembered or cared for an old gnomish ranger with a few useless papers, an owl, and a bow to her name. The world had changed, and then another war sprang up, and she'd had enough of the conflicts. She went back to the wood, tended her flowers and plants, and carved some trinkets to sell in town. And then the last entry of the book, dated just about nine years ago, noting a strange darkness in the wood and a nauseating energy, as if the forest itself was sick. There's a break of a page, and uh, then there's just shaky writing 
as if the hand was trembling. It says that she investigated and found and fought the blight that surprised her. She fought and killed a few more. Couldn't find the source. Her age wasn't helping matters. Beasts began to flee and hide, and the dead began to rise, and she planted death bells and lamp vine around her cavern and cabin, and then finally she went to check on the grove and the master. And she writes just a few words, corruption, death, rot. She admits that she fled back to her home, injured, exhausted. And she says in this final few sentences, she'll go back out and search again tomorrow. But she night tonight she has to rest. Her heart aches, her bones are weary. She can't do anything in her current state except drag herself to her bed and she'll go when her strength returns. And the rest of the pages are blank. I guess she never did. Sorry, say that again. Just, Asana was reading this to the whole group the whole time. Just, she said she returned to her bed and, until she regained her strength. And, well, I guess she never did. That's wow. Well, um, even more. Reason to put it to rest proper then, no? No. Seems like, she, seems like she was a good person. She was. She's been put to rest rather, rather well here, might I say. Since her bones are set on the bed and not walking around. She's protected from the blight in here. Also, um, also, Ariel, real quick. Mm -hmm. She said death bells? Yes. Is that different than dusk bells. Oh. I might have mis- yeah, I might have mistyped misspoken. I did mean dusk bells. <laughs> Alright, and she goes, well, um, the good news is she's- there might be something around the back she's planted. Could be very useful to us. At least to me. Uh, does any of the lamp vine come into the uh, room at all? Um... We take a quick glance upwards, um... Like from the front near the door or anything? Hmm. I'll say that, yeah, there is there is a gap. Um, a chink in the logs where that packing had fallen out, and it looks like some of the plant life, including some of the ivy and including some of the lamp vine, has made its way inside over time. Just, just walk over to it and Druid craft a bloom on the lamp vine, get a bit more light in the room. Okay. You do, and uh, this one actually glows more yellow. The one that you'd gotten in Walton uh, was more on the orange, closer to the red side of things. You know these can grow in uh, a small variety of colors, mostly the warmer tones. This one's just a little bit brighter. Oh, different color. Might have to take a cutting. If each of you would be okay, could I ask that we take some time here? I think it's good that we rest. It's Just a short one at the very least. I... So. I've been working on something and I've... It's why I stress that we might want to leave her here for the time being. Alright. Well, I need to get used to the sword anyways. Alright. And she'll just kind of walk over to, um, Quill again. So you were summoned to, summoned to be by your master? No. You I were bonded hatched. with? I hatched. I bound. I lived. She died, and I did too. My descendants live here now. Keep her memory. I do not. 
not really here then. I am here as here as I can be. I am here. I am not here, too. I am both. I will keep your memory. Good. We have a piece of a memory of one of our friends as well. Good. And knowing this, bringing this information back, well, if it's not known, we could come back and tell Soren of their founding history and memory might stay that much more. You're more than anything. Mm -hmm. We'll do our best to bring back the memory of this forest. See the owl close its eyes and... Uh, you realize you, aside from just the hoots, you haven't really seen any indication of it breathing. But at this point it seems like there's a, uh, a deep breath. And it spreads its wings, springs upwards, flies directly up into the trees, and seems to vanish amongst the twigs and the snow in the dim light. Shame, but that he left so early, but well, who knows. And she kind of walks back into the room. All right. She kind of walk over and just like pull up the sheet over the skull, as mm. though it's not so visible. Yep. You pull the sheet up and uh, make it a make it a bit of a shroud for her. For now, at least. Mm -hmm. And she'll go and sit down. Okay. She'll like lean on the side of the bed. lean there and you contemplate perhaps a little bit of a direction you felt your magic tugging and the idea that perhaps you're close to a breakthrough perhaps there's something and you can almost hear the whispering at the edges of your ears and uh as this hour passes, Kane focusing on the sword, um, I'll say that Calda perhaps is, uh, you're, as you're looking around, noting some more details of the, uh, the area, the objects in the room, um, you see some of the things sitting on the shelves are um, various tools for sewing, cooking, wood carving, mostly rusted and rotted beyond all use. Uh, but on some of the shelves there are some finished trinkets, as were mentioned in the journal. Uh, typically in the rough, simple shapes of animals. Either uh, figures or amulets. Um, showing bears, wolves, deer, unicorn here, a dragon there. But the most common motif she seems to have gone for was owls. And as you're looking over this, uh, these wood carvings, these signs of the person who once lived here, uh, the pegs above the bed do draw your attention. And you realize that the curved length of wood sitting across them is actually very uh, carved with a great deal of detail. And you realize from the shape of it, it's actually a small short bow. It's not strung, 
but it seems to be in good shape. And the wood is. This is Cain that sees this? This is called uh, because Cain is currently focused on Bramble. Um, but the, uh, the pale wood of this bow is carved with, yet again, more owl and feather motifs. And aside from a layer of dust, it doesn't seem to be damaged by the elements. Well, well, I'll be. Well, Sana, take a look at the bed frame. Huh. That was the wood he was talking about. I thought he meant the book. She'll walk over and she'll kind of gently pick it up if if she can. Yeah. The bow is just resting on a couple of pegs uh, just above the bed. You can lift it off of them without trouble. It does upset a little bit of dirt and dust, but turn it over, brush some of the debris away. Beautiful handiwork. Hmm. Seems she had a theme. And she stuck to it till, till that last day, oh my. Well. I'm no. I'm not great with it. I'm not that keen either. Maybe you can make a trade with my brother. I'll see. I'll... Should we keep it with us? Yeah, yeah. It seems not touched by anything, and that's the only thing in the room that is. Little magical her type, magic. Her type with her background would definitely have something magical. Yeah, a little that's magical in nature. Just might need a new string. Yeah, King could probably replace his longbow with it if he'd be willing to part with that string. Yes, but, but should... I also don't want to be giving my brother all the fun little things. Then you keep it on you for now. I don't really have much of a use for it, and we'll let him. Lar seems sword. to have a type. Yeah, we'll let Kane play with the sword for a while. And then we'll see where that goes. How about that? Alright. And she'll just kind of go into her bag. Uh, how, how much of a curve does the bow have? Um, it's a fairly gentle curve. Uh, but it's also, there's the fact that it's not currently strung, so it might be curved further once it is. Right. And she'll just... I don't have much on me for storing things. The plate at my side is barely holding on. Maybe you hold on to it. Yeah. Like I'll, I said, I'll just take it. Put at least for now. Back. For now. Hmm. Could be a good try deal. I've got some, uh... I've got an idea. I'm assuming we're nearing the end of the short rest. Almost. Not quite there. Are you gonna explain it to me, or we're gonna wait for it? In the broadest sense, there's some, um, vague mutterings I've heard that I might be able to make a bit clearer. Rest for a little longer, we <laughs> we all need it. Do we have to roll the hit dice to heal ourselves up to our new max? No. No, that just happens, so don't worry about that. Uh, okay. However, as you're uh, sitting and relaxing, Elaris, I did unmute you, John, so if you're there... Do we have a John? I am on push to talk, yeah. Okay. Yeah, here, I'm here. Just making sure. Um, Elaris, uh, 
you're perhaps sitting and just taking a rest, taking a taking a load off your feet. And uh, you perhaps just blink briefly, um, given the dust in the room, especially whatever's been unsettled by picking up the bow, and uh, just generally being in there, the stirring of air. Um, you just blink, but in the brief instant your eyes are closed, somehow you manage to open them to a different place. And it's that same gray, foggy, misty area that you've seen once before in a dream. And you can feel the you can feel the looming presence of your patron just behind you. Well you then. See, uh, you see an arm reach over your shoulder, point, and say, It is time for you to learn. You see a rift again open in the air, and one of those shadowy dogs claw its way out. This time the rift seals up directly behind it. Yeah, Alaris draws his crossbow. Yep. Draw your crossbow, and immediately you take aim, and you shoot. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna fucking... Dog is lunging towards you at the very least. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, natural one, but you do have a second shot. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to knock a new one. Okay. Yeah, 21 to hit. That's bad. Yep. And the actual amount of force behind the, uh, the bolt doesn't seem to matter in this case, as... You hit it dead on, and you've fought these dogs. You know how tough they are. You know it takes more than one hit to take it down. And yet, somehow in this place, in this dream, you see the dog yelp and fall over in midair as it leaps towards you and skid across the ground, rolling almost to your feet. And suddenly you feel this surge of power from the crossbow in your hands run up your arms, up your shoulders, your neck, into your head. And you simultaneously hear and feel your patron say, Observe. He reaches his hand out again. And though his hand doesn't move in your vision, you feel the sensation of a grasp, and a twist, a loop, and a pull. And you see, from the body of this shadowy hound, rise up a spectral figure that hovers, blank-eyed, humanoid, despite what it came from, in front of you. Yeah, uh, Alaris keeps his crossbow. And the shade just hovers there, and Exanthus says, Did you feel? Yes. Remember that. Those that fall to you may be borrowed against the time that you have set for them. No more than a day, and no more than once. They may aid you, but remember, it is not permanent. All time is borrowed, and this is borrowed against the time that came. Okay. You have sent some back where they should have been. There is yet more. 
understand. Keep fighting. Gain strength. And your time will not come too soon. With that, you see him fold his fingers together, and the shade disappears in wisps of smoke. You blink, and you're back inside the hut. <sighs> okay. Whoa, you seem, um, active. No. Yeah. Yeah. A little freaked out. Okay. Rider up the pant leg? No. No. Exanthus came to me again. Oh, that little. And she, like, gets up and walks over. <laughs> Is he still there? Uh, I think he left already. And she, she like, ta- like puts her hand on Alaris's head and, like, turns so his ear is facing her. Like, are you in there? I want to chat with you, mister. Uh, oh, okay. I, uh, I don't think that's how that... Okay. Uh-huh. Is he in the crossbow? I don't... I don't know, and I, I summon the crossbow, and, like... And, like... <laughs> She'll, like, turn it in her hands, and just, like... <laughs> Shakes it, like... <laughs> <laughs> just, just like holds it in her hands. Like, are you listening? <sighs> Look, I know. Mm. I don't know. You're a god. Mm. And she like throws it back to Alaris. Next time you're having a little existential episode, just don't forget me, okay? Okay. I'll do okay. the same if another god comes my way, but, you know, we don't all have that privilege. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Okay. What do you want? He wanted to teach me something. Um, show me something oh. new. You've picked up a new trick, too. Yes, it seems that um, I can use the... I can give uh, people I kill with this crossbow some borrowed time to bring others to the ship to the into the fold as well she's got, she's got, like, it's not permanent rolls her teeth over her lower lip and just you mean I'm dead it's not permanent it's uh, he's, he says it's to bring others into the fold as well others who have been borrowing too much time it's only the Barely lasts more than a day. Now I really want to talk to him. But, well, normally I'd be a bit more judgy towards you. Uh, you might have a similar opinion on what I'm about to do. She walks over to the bed. Yep. At this point, your short rests have completed. You are officially leveled up. And Alsana? Yeah. You're pretty sure you know what you're doing here. Well, I'm not judging you, so don't judge me. She pulls the uh, sheet down. Such that the head is visible. Mm-hmm. And just hand into the um, pocket of ash. Yep. And just... Yeah, just like draw, like does a small line on the head of the skull. Okay. And then one to her own. Yep. Draw your lines. You draw upon your magic. Your something deeper, more almost innate than simple spells that anybody can learn. Something very much tied to the branch of druidry that you have fallen into, taken up. She'll just kind of, in her hand, have a bit more of it. and It'll slowly smoke, and she'll just blow the smoke into the kind of hanging jaw of the skeleton. Yep. For an instant, the smoke just hovers around the face. Then all at once, in a rush of air... It seems to suck into the parted jaws. Uh, 
Hello, Renala. Skull moves very slightly. I'm sorry to bother you after so long, but we'd like to pick up where you left off. There is no response. And you remember something that you've heard about this power from those further on the path than you in this circle. That it requires questions. And that you mm -hmm. have five. Yep. So, what would you like to ask? Do you know where the grove of the Guardian of the Forest is? And if so, where? You hear a yes. And then with the if so, where? North and east of here. It is simple when the paths lead you, but when not, you follow, follow the vines and the birch trees, and find the grove, and it is quiet and light, and water from the stone. Until now, the tree is dark, the lights are gone, the water black, but the birch still lead. was two questions. You know you have three more. She kind of like looks to the group. Anyone else have anything? Uh, side for this? Sorry, say that again. Uh, Kane was outside training. I assume told what was going on and brought it. This is the. This was just after the end of your short rest. You would have felt oh, okay. the attunement take hold. You would have gotten a grasp of what this blade could do, and perhaps you might have headed inside to fill in the others, just in time to see the smoke blown towards the skull and then inhaled. Okay. Well, then I'll continue on my own. Just, um, if you extra at the end. Uh, no, we want her what else to be in this forest? Uh, I suppose that too. What is the question you're asking? Alsana has to ask it, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what uh, question would you like to ask next? Is there anything in this forest that could help us to return it to its former glory, uh, regardless of Bramble? We've already found that. She takes another needless breath and she says, Regrow the vines, cleanse the water, last rites, restore, heal. Destroy 
the darkness tree. Cleanse the blight. Restore. Heal. Regrow. You, the breath just fades, muttering those words over and over. Or like, like slowly, like runs her fingers over the side of the skull. We will, we will, dear. We will. Two more questions, or you can choose to end the spell. Anything special done with your remains? I personally plan for a burial prayer and a desk bell in the mouth. To the forest. Let it grow from me. That will do. That is all. One more question. She'll look around again. Just kind of. Well, anyone have anything? Can you ask her to thank the owl for us? There's nothing else important to really ask. Well, we could see if the bow has a name. That's good. I mean, you can click to it regardless, I'm sure, but... Using its proper name will be nice. I have, a, I have a better question, actually. Alright. Do we have your permission to use Bramble and whatever the name of your bow is? Yes. Let them fight, as I cannot. And that is all that your, all your questions that you have. And the smoke and she just kind of drifts from between the jaws. And she just like, just like a few fingers down the side of the skull, and just like, thank you, dear. You can return to your rest. And the body once again grows slack. So oh, Quill, we said thank you. Alright. And with that, it's silent and still in the hut again. Should we get on with the burial? Oh, you heard the woman. Alright. Come on, Kane. Do you want Just me to um arrange the body? I'm not as squeamish as you. I'm not squeamish, but if you'd like. Most I have is the holy symbol is a, a wedding ring, but I'll try and make up a prayer. Also I will kind of just like take the sheet off. Lay it on the floor and kind of slowly transfer the body over right. to the sheet. Because you take your time, you're able to delicately get everything onto the sheet, bundle it up. In the meantime, the others perhaps are outside, trying to chip a hole down into the dirt. When she's moved them all also, she'll head around to the back of the house, 
if there is kind of one. There is no back. It is uh, straight up against the bluff and, in fact, cut into it. All right. Can she look for where the dusk bell is that she said she planted? Um, well, it you've got uh, the front and the two sides as possibilities. Uh, there is a pretty thick layer of snow, though, and it would be difficult to find any seeds that have gone to ground, but if you want, you can do some poking around, or if you can come up with some way to make it easier, feel free to propose it. Um, I guess for one, does... Can she also just check through any of her belongings, see if she had any kind of stored, maybe? Any, like, mm. old, withered flat petals or anything? In a jar? I'll say it's possible, given who you are, but not simple. Uh, do a d20 luck roll. Seventeen does it. Uh, yeah, you remember that you've actually got uh, a couple of dried flowers inside of a jar. You kind of got it buried in the bottom of your pack. Oh, sorry, I meant more so if she, if uh, this house had any. Oh, oh, I see. You know what? Yeah, I'll I'll keep the luck roll. Yes, you do find some. All right in a jar, ready to add to your herbalism kit, if you so choose. But, yes. yeah, there's a... Hmm, let's say a d4, 1d4 plus 1. I'll go ahead and roll it for All how many right. blossoms are in there. You've got two blossoms. Alright. I can look for seeds later, but for now... Kind of like go into that, like uh, walk it back over to the remains and just place one of the blossoms in the mouth. Yeah. These flowers. If is anyone in the house right now? Is anybody in the house, or are you all outside trying to dig a grave? Call this trying to dig at least. Kane's digging. Uh, I guess I'll also also start digging as. So you left Elsana inside to prepare this body for interment. Mm -hmm. I believe, um, I don't, yeah, I don't have everything written down, but, uh, 90% sure she has some instant sticks. Most likely of some sort. Is it in the Explorers pack? Hold on. I don't think it's in Explorers. I'm pretty sure that's in Diplomats. No. No incense. Incense? Yeah, incense. Uh, that's in priests. Oh, okay. That's good, tinderbox. Yeah, no, incense is not an explorer's kit staple. Okay, can I do another d20, see if she has any on her? I'll allow just the one more, and it would have to be real high. Alright. Bloody hell, I, I was thinking 19 or 20 and you roll a 19. Mm. Alright, you've got one stick of incense in the bottom yep. of your pack. Yep. And she'll just kind of set it to burn. Alright. Yeah, there's not really a dedicated dish for this purpose, but you're able to kind of prop it against uh, perhaps the old plate or bowl that Ranala that once was hers. Yeah. And slowly the incense starts to fill the room um, with its own almost spicy scent. Uh, it's starting to chase away some of just the musk of water and earth and age and everything else that is set in here for so long. Uh, in the meantime, the three outside, um, with all three of you chipping away, though out of curiosity, what kind of tools are you using? Um, Kane, I believe, in his explorer's pack has a shovel, because they have those. Alright. do? They do. 
Are you sure? I'm not sure I remember that. Nope. Backpack, bedroll, Are you sure? box, ten torches, ten rations, water skin, and fifty feet of hemp and rope. Yeah, I don't remember having a shovel in most explorer's packs. <laughs> Is there a different pack that Kane has? No, it's explorer's pack. Oh, shit, you know what I'm thinking of? It's the folk here background. That comes with the shovel. That's what it was. Okay. Then yeah. Elias also has a shovel from his uh, pack that he went with, and I don't remember what it was. Did you also do folk hero background? Yes. That would be it. Yeah. All right. Kane doesn't have folk hero, but yeah. Yeah. But Elias does have folk hero, so he does have a shovel. But oh. but as a point of order and as a question, can since uh, hex since the pack of the blade can like summon any weapon, can I technically? <laughs> Technically, get like a like a spade of some kind. Um, I don't think that the spade counts as a summoned weapon. <laughs> that's, okay, yeah. You, that's more tool yeah, for thinking, weapon. Yeah, pact yeah. pact of blade can summon any weapon, meaning that you. I'm pretty sure it means that you have a single dedicated weapon, but it can be a weapon of any type. I'm pretty sure. I Either way, a shovel is a tool, not a weapon. Yeah. I'm just saying in general. At, work, at I, best, improvised weapon. I don't think yeah. Alaris has a literal hammer space of, well, yeah. anything. Well, uh, let me check that actually. <laughs> Your crossbow ain't no essence. <laughs> it ain't no essence, yeah, no. Uh, give me a sec. Because I know I can. Uh, in case, Kane, using one of his hand axes, whichever one he likes the, the least. And is just breaking up the frozen ground. Where's the better athletics, Kane or uh, Calda? What? Sorry? Where's the better athletics, Kane or Calda? Calda, probably. Yeah, Calda. So, as Pact of the Blade, you can summon a you can summon a weapon, and it can be. Yeah. Yeah. So you have your crossbow. Yeah. Yeah, I have a crossbow. Yeah. Okay. That's just because they maybe Any. give Calda the shuffle, but yeah. 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 Um, it is entirely possible for Kane to try and like chip out a border with the hand axe, and Calda follows along behind with the shovel. Um, it does take a long time to dig a even uh, decent grave, suitable grave, uh, between the frozen ground and the snow. You have to clear away first, and just. Um, Asana might come over with some produced flame just to kind of melt the earth a bit. Yeah. Yeah, even then, it's uh, probably going to take you a solid hour, maybe two, in order to um, get something that's fairly deep and uh, fairly well sized, though, on the upside, you don't necessarily have to make it as long as you might for a medium sized humanoid. Asana is also occasionally tapping guidance on people who are shuffling and digging. Yeah. And that, that does help speed things up a little bit. It might shave you down to, let's say, an hour 15 or so. Um, but eventually you're able to get the grave dug out. You can go in and collect R Ranala's remains, lower them down. And you can just uh, go ahead and shovel Earth back over her one, one uh, shovelful at a time. Alsana knows few normal rates, yeah. <laughs> Alsana might have some general idea of them. Go ahead and do a religion check. Let's see how much All you right. might have read about. Yeah, guidance. Right, well, would call would call the no rights. Possibly do a religion check as well, just to see how much you overlap. I see the 24, 24. for Alsana. Yep. My intelligence is not good. 17, though. Yeah, 17 is pretty decent. Um, Calda, you're kind of aware of... You know the... Uh, you know rights for um, basically common use. Uh, not really anything dedicated to any particular... Um, any particular gods or religions or even just like uh, modes of living. Uh, Alsana, you have read over so many various rites and so on and you're able to... you can do... you could probably do the generalized ones but you could also 
potentially offer some rights that are perhaps a little bit more favored among folk of the woods and the wildlands, the rangers and druids, and uh, just the people who live on the edges of civilization and might prefer these, might prefer the idea of being given not so much to the gods, but to the land and the earth. All right. And she will do so. Right. You do, you scoop up the handful of earth and sprinkle it, you speak the words that are traditional. You let the earth cover her, and you bid it accept her as one of its own, returned to it at last. And with that, there is a fresh patch of turned earth before a dilapidated cabin in the middle of the wood, and slowly a light snow begins to fall. She'll place a lampfine seed in the churned earth. Mm -hmm. Place the seed, pat it down, and leave it to grow with the next spring. And with that, as you decide where to go from there, we're going to go ahead and, if anybody needs to take a break, take one now. I think we'll rent the washroom, actually. I'm at 1,600 words already. <laughs> You're taking very detailed Good. notes. I wrote down everything. Yeah. Good. Yeah. For, the rec for the record, perhaps everybody should, even in like quiet emotional moments, try to speak up a little bit, because I don't know how much fuzz is going over my microphone and my sound issues, so uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that a lot of words were not lost. Okay. That sometimes pretty good so far. Sometimes you guys get kind of so it's uh, not so much pretty good so far on your end, it's how good it is on my end. I'm the one recording this, remember. Yeah. And when I've got most people on Discord turned up to the absolute max volume and I'm still having a little bit of not trouble hearing, but I can just hear you, I'm a little worried that the presumably constant uh, static that's probably going through my microphone might cover you up in recording. Because unfortunately, that's still a thing. Fair enough. By the way, is Devin's volume like wildly shifting for anyone else? Or is that just me? At points, but not like that. I don't know that it's his volume so much as maybe he's moving away from the mic or his voice is going quieter because of inflection. I don't know, because I'm getting a lot of like the same sentences from I can't hear them to like very loud my headphones. Hmm. I don't know why. But if it's just me, it's just me. Tell you what, though, I had this uh, this encounter set up for a while, in mind for a while, and then last time, Devin's like, hey, look at this cool thing that my character got on level up, and I'm going, welp, you're getting some questions answered, quite literally. Let's see what you ask. Gotta love abilities like that.
Hello. Hey. Hello. All right. I think everybody's back. You there? I am. John, push talk. Maybe he's not back. Hmm. All right. Anyhow, I'll let you know. Uh, I've told everybody else, Devin. Um, just because of the uh, probable audio fuzz from my uh, input, um, make sure you stay close to your mic and definitely speak up, even if emotions make you want to make the voice soft. All right. Because, yeah, I'm a little worried. Sometimes just things might get covered up and might be inaudible. Mm, sure thing. I'm back. Sorry, what did I miss? All right, you're back. I think everybody's back. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. sound off? Mm -hmm. Yo, yo. All right. I saw little lights come up for everybody, so everybody's here. Okay. Pick back up. With the aftermath of... of a basic funeral, at the very least, last rites. An empty cabin in the forest. And vague directions to the end point of your quest. So, snow is beginning to fall again. Alsana, you know from your look ahead into the weather that this will go for a little bit, but it'll be lighter than it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. After the hours that have passed, it is moved into afternoon. What would you like to do? Do we wish to set off now and potentially be working in the dark, or shall we save here until morning? Well, I think till morning's best. It's only been, what, two days if we take the night here since we left? I believe it's only the fourth today, so there's still another long while. It was claimed that uh, it is safe here. And I believe we should take advantage of the I also have some things to take care of myself. Alsana is... Oh, first she'll just... Uh, Alaris, could I borrow that shovel you have? Sure. And she'll take it and she'll just kind of start going, uh, like, lightly digging through the snow around the house. Alright. Um... I will say that this kind of comes down to an investigation check. All right. So. <laughs> Does the shovel help? The shovel allows you to make the check. All right. Guidance it is. All right. Guidance. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's see that D4. 19 plus... 22. 22. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're able to... It takes you a little while. It takes you a little bit of shifting of snow. But you're able to come across... Um, Underneath the snow, but on the surface of the dirt, kind of flush almost against the wall, front wall of the cabin beneath the window, uh, you see some flattened down and um, pretty much dead for the winter plants, but you kind of recognize the, even in this state, the shape of the leaves and the stalks, and uh, you're, you know that this is... Uh, dusk bells. Yes. Uh, <laughs> everyone will just hear like a very relieved sigh from outside the window, probably. All right, all right. Uh, 
and with your herbalist kit and proficiencies therein, you're able to um, find um, and withdraw some uh, some basic small seed pods and get them into a jar. All right. Should I roll for how many? Hmm. Let's do. Oh, let's do a. D4 hmm. plus one. Now let's uh, start with a basically a dexterity check, but add your proficiency bonus. Dexterity and proficiency. Yeah. Mm. That be just my proficiency. Okay. Um. So yeah, you can roll a d20 and then just say you add a. Is it plus three you guys are at? I believe mm -hmm. so. Yeah, roll a d20. I'll just roll investigation again because it is just plus three. Sure. 19. Yeah, you do pretty well. Um, now, as of as a note, the way that dusk bells grow, um, they do grow uh, these little... They don't grow singular large seeds. They grow pods that are full of very tiny seeds. Mm. Uh, basically for the better chance of some taking root and surviving. Right. Um, so, given the 19... I'm going to say that this is how many seed pods you get. Uh, actually, I'll let you roll it. Um, give me a 2d4. 2d4? Yeah. Four. four. You get four pods of Duskbell seeds. Right. She kind of returns into the room with a smile on her face. you found your flowers I see oh yes I'm I'm very happy because well they're quite difficult to get your hands on sometimes illegal uh, why well um funny thing with these uh, they fight very well against um undead that's why I placed a blossom of it in her mouth um, definitely keeps away any magic that might bring the body back to life when it shouldn't. However, this is a broad canopy, so um, sometimes they're used by priests and the like to make sure that uh, graveyards don't become hotspots for necromancers. But other times they're used by assassins who would rather keep the slain royalty down in the ground without any clerics bringing them back to life. Knife in the chest, blossom in the mouth. And as such, they're um, difficult to get your hands on. All right. I personally only use them for the undead uh, fighting aspect, but... Yeah, I'm sure if we've found any uh, seedier places, uh, no pun intended, they could also sell for quite a little bit. Yeah, undead aren't that great, but it's from, we really gotta sell those in like a safe, not safe, but we don't want to get arrested. Uh, GM question, are they illegal everywhere or just in certain places? Mm, I would say, given their history and the potential use that you mentioned there, uh, they're illegal most places, and in the rest, you might get some looks askance for them. Flaps on the wrists. Possibly. At the very least, perhaps you'd run the risk of them being confiscated and turned okay. over to more like graveyard authorities, rather than let them be uh, floating around in the hands of whoever would get a hold of them. And she's just kind of turning the four pods kind of stacked up in a little vial she has. Uh, so yes, let's hope that we don't ever get our bags searched, but... If you ever need it hidden, you can always use mine. Yeah, he's... It's a nice bag. Uh... We'll keep that in mind if we go past any checkpoints, but for now I'll keep them on me. Sure. Uh... Mind if I ask you magic, here's a quick question. Just something I've always been curious about. 
You not knowing about magic, they, uh, really. Not much better. You said those pods a uh, fight against the undead is preventing uh, clerical revival. Mm -hmm. Is healing magic necromatic in here? Oh, that is a... Um, I don't think you understand the basis of how complicated a question that is. It's I don't. That's why I'm asking. That's <laughs> different healing. I think healing dead back to life is a little bit necromatic. I'm not... I don't really know it. But I know you ask some... the scholars, the spells that raise the dead, um, are necromancy. Yeah, it's the same as... Uh, it's the school of magic. Um, as for healing, it's... Uh, it's it's less bringing things back that shouldn't be, and more accelerating natural occurrences of wounds closing and the such. Not necromancy, it's just more... more big words, but it's not necromancy. For the most part. So it's not just breathing life into that which was harmed? That was always taught. Mm. I think necromancy is more breathing life into those that are dead. Well, Again, I mean the healing. Uh... Well, healing dead is necromancy. Healing someone that's still alive is not necromancy. But you're not putting life force into them, you're just spreading your own healing? It depends yeah, on so. the source, really. There are things that can transfer, there are plenty of spells that can take life out of one thing and put it into another, be it the caster or someone else. Um, for example, I rip the life out of uh, various things and stick them into you, dear brother. I thought you noticed like necromancy, though. It's not necromancy, you see. At least it depends who you ask. There's a distinct line between revival of the dead back into fully functioning people and into mindless corpses that do your bidding. Well, Think of it as a natural cycle. If that's your narrow view of it, then I don't really have much in the way of convincing you. Oh no, I'm not trying to correct you, I'm just understanding the difference. You're just dropping your layman's terms on those who have studied the subject. I'm hoping you can teach me further. It's I... what you enjoyed best. You seem stubborn on your own views. No, but if no one questions you, you'll never uh, elaborate. I have. Seems to have gone over your head. Well, just one question on top of that, then. Uh, what's to stop someone who's claiming not to use necromancy from just enslaving the people who revive? Generally, it's like, easy to tell. Sorry, easy to... Generally, it's easy to tell if the person is breathing and has a heartbeat, then there's not really much in the way of enslavement. The only way you can really do that is if you get something that is distinctly undead. Otherwise, you're going to other things like charms and stuff like that. Well, if you want to enslave them at that point, I feel like you can just make them undead if you have the power to, which isn't good. It's not good at all. There's many manner of magical ideas and things, and if you want to go what if this, what if that, then we can sit here all day, but in terms of basic spells that are that are taught from one person to another, there's nothing I'm aware of that does that. Hmm. Is a question, Nariel, is necromancy generally considered illegal, I assume? Hmm. Uh, the act of um, bringing a corpse Great. back to do your bidding, of deliberately raising zombies or skeletons or the like, yes. Uh, if you're asking me if there's a blanket ban on all study of the no, school no, of that. necromancy, no. Yeah, no, I just mean like, uh, the, the what you, you said, yeah, I just wonder that. 
because then Kayla will ask it, um, also, everyone else assuming that he doesn't know it. Uh, enslavement is so bad, uh, he's charming someone? Magically illegal as well? Well, let's see. It's... Again, it's weird and I'm not too aware of laws, but if you ask generally morally, it's frowned upon if you exert your will on someone else who doesn't want it, yes. Most charms usually wear off. That's the other bit. Well, You're getting into it. some scary and powerful stuff if it doesn't fade after a while, or it's a simple persuasion rather than subjugating one's will. Don't do any of those dead body stuff, the undead stuff. Isn't that wear off if it's not, like, really powerful? Mm, depends on what's casting and who's casting it. You saw those zombie, those skeletons? They've probably been skeletons for much longer than we've been here. A lot of powerful magic at hand at that. So apparently there's a tree we have to deal with. Yeah, I mean, you got some fire on you, don't you? I think it might be a bit more complicated than that, and let us... Let me restate that we're trying to not burn down the forest. Well, in that case, he'll take out his hand axe that he used for a shovel and begin sharpening it. That's a good idea. It's a really good idea. I have a spare one if you want. Whetstone and a hand axe. And as for your question earlier, brother, a good rule of thumb. If it's dead, and it comes back, and it's alive, then it's fine. If it's dead, and it comes back, and it's undead, then it's not. It's as simple as that. You're abusing someone's rest at that point. Hmm. Well, yes and no. Would you call mine abuse? The speaking? Hmm. Indeed. Well you're not well you're not controlling them, you're asking them a question and they're giving you the answer that they know. You're not you're not making them do anything. Let me just double check my ability. Yep. Just Well they're not, they're under no obligation to give the truth, but they do have to answer. Well, yes, I suppose. But I do suppose it gets pretty boring in whatever life afterlife exists. Mm. I would answer questions, too. Depends also, on who you ask. Does there have to be a body for you to ask the dead? Generally, yes. I'd imagine so, yeah. Okay. I mean, we just witnessed... It we just, just witnessed her talk to a skull, so... It, so long as it has a mouth, and it isn't, well, still walking. Okay, body is part of a body, at least as criteria. Got it. Mouth yeah, is I, part of a body. I think it's, it's at least it's um the neck and above. You've got a safe bet. Alright, so no body, no spell. By the way, uh, if any of you meet a tragic end, do I have permission to ask you if you want anything else done with you? Sure. Yeah, but I think you gotta also ask my family that too. Let's ask my patron. Give my permission to finally toss me in a swamp like I've always wanted to. <laughs> mm, swamp's too good for you. Yeah, that's true. Hey, if it's just final rest, then we should Sometimes Toss me in a swamp. Sometimes people who go against final resting wishes are a little messed with. I've known people with odd, you know, last right, you know, requests. I've known some people with no last right requests, and that's that's one hell of a conversation sometimes. Personally, I want to get enough magic power that my corpse could be turned into an interesting magic artifact, but. I suppose we all have our own preferences. That's right. Asana, yeah. assuming that you die at some point, what do you want done with your body? I just tree. said it. Also, I feel like a magical tree. Uh, I don't think... It's more likely I'll be dealing with your lots, um, ends than you mine. 
At least if it's natural. Uh, most of what we're doing right now is not natural. Seems like it's good just practice what we want to do, just in case. I don't think we're going to write Last Will and Testaments together as a group. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for that right now. No, not just a group. But, um... Uh, check my back rate pocket if I do bite it. Okay. Check with my family if I do bite it. Mm. I'll send them a message with a bird. Gina maybe family. ask you how to phrase the send Maybe ask you how to phrase the letter. You could also ask me their names at that point. Mm, you're still under no obligation to answer truthfully. This is true, but at that point I'm dead, and there's no really way, other way of contacting them, so... Mm -hmm, that point I... you would be one of my only hopes. Mm -hmm, I suppose. We could always find a way to bring you back in, uh, all in one piece, though. Hopefully all in one piece, I'd appreciate that. Well, if it's alright with you, I'm sleeping in the dead person's bed. Yeah, I'm gonna write some letters before hitting- It's the afternoon, Alsana. And she kind of stops and is like, mm -hmm. Also, the shutters are not well here. Um, maybe not. Wait until dark? Hmm. And she'll just like go outside and start slowly setting up a tent. As a note, it is still currently snowing, though lightly. But you <laughs> can set up a tent if you'd like. In the meantime, those inside, there is some firewood stacked up by the by the hearth. Um, it is old, but it seems to have actually kept dry despite various leaks. Um, or at least dry enough for now. Um, it might not last the whole night, but it could get you started and it could start to warm up the area. This is fairly frigid. Especially as you guys are not currently um, moving around, fighting, or trudging through snow. And so, uh, you're, uh, from all that activity, your bodies have cooled over both that short rest and then following the burial. Um, so it's uh, maybe not comfortable in unless you get a little bit of a fire going in there. But, you know, once you do, you are able to, um, you know, potentially get some snow in the teapot, uh, heat it up, swish and wash the teapot out, get some more snow and melt that as well. And you have, you could have potentially have warm water for um, anything you might need it for, be it... Uh, quick uh, dip of the hands or um, cleaning anything else uh, potentially making some food um, but th you could spend the better part of the afternoon leading into evening kind of preparing this shelter for a night's rest um, and Alsana you are free to set up the tent outside and camp out under the, uh, clouds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, I think she just on, on, on average has a lower resting body temperature than everyone else, so. <laughs> cold-blooded. Not cold-blooded, just, just the kind oh, of thing where if you, <laughs> where she just, like, puts the hands on your neck <laughs> and just, ah. Poor circulation. There you go. Not not the happiest uh, circumstance for a person in the snow in the winter, but um, yeah, if you choose to rest outside, uh, it is colder out there. Even once you get the tent set up, even once you've kind of piled your bedroll in there and curled up in it, um, uh. Would you guys be doing a set watch cycle, or are you going to go ahead and just take the rest overall? Kane's at least going to keep watch for the first two hours, I don't know. 
Alright. Asano will be early to rise. Alright. Uh, so yeah, uh, Elias is a fairly riser. Is anyone gonna be in the middle of the night? Call the old try, but no dark vision. <laughs> Okay, so uh, as night falls, and the snow actually lets up by the time darkness sets fully. Um, Cain, you uh, set up kind of in the doorway, or at, or just outside of it perhaps, um, in order to block some of the uh, cold air and wind from seeping inside more than it already does, given all the chinks and gaps and cracks. Um, and you set to keep watch. Sorry, real quick. Yes. Um, just kind of retroactively. Uh, between the like afternoon and when we would actually be kind of going to sleep, how how long would that be? Probably a few hours. I would say um, anywhere from three to four. All right. All right. Yeah. Never mind then. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Kane, go ahead and give me a perception roll. And Alsana, let's see a constitution check. Alright, just raw check? Yeah, just a check. I just want to see a number here. So Kane has an 11, and Alsana also has an 11. Um, Kane, you're keeping watch into the night. Uh, it's not getting it doesn't it's not as dark quite as early as it has been in the middle of winter you are uh the season is heading towards the point where the day and nights are of equal length but you're not quite there yet um so it grows dark you watch for some hours you don't really see much alsana as the only person inside that tent Outside the hut with no fire nearby, you're starting to get really cold. <sighs> you could probably kinda like... try to stick it out a while longer, but mm, it's not nice. Would you be at risk of losing rest if you tried to stick it out longer? If you tried to stick it out longer and you didn't manage to uh, get some... Uh, heat inside the tent, possibly. Mm. Yeah. She'll kind of sigh, pack up some of her stuff, and go into the room. Okay. It's okay. Kind of you. like. Ca Kane, as you're keeping watch, you hear a sigh from inside the tent, some rustling and thumps, and you see the uh, canvas shudder a little bit. And you see Alsana crawl out of the tent, bedroll in her arms, pack in on her back, and trudge towards the door. As he's walking past, he'll just pull out his extra black bit from his bag and toss it over her shoulders. She says nothing and keeps walking. <laughs> Inside the hut, you've got the fire burned, burning low, but warm on the opposite side of the room, far from the door in the front of the home. And, uh... She's going Calda to take a corner. And Alaris are both curled up nearby. Okay. Do you take a corner at the front of the house or at the back? Actually, is anyone on the dead person's bed? Um... Nope. Is anybody? No? Calda didn't go on it. Yeah. As a note, that bed is built for a gnome. Mm. So you could, but your feet will definitely hang over the edge. She's going to basically kind of set up a corner on the bed. Okay. Using those pegs. And just kind of have this like little mini kind of fort tent going on. <laughs> Alright. And just face mask on as well, just trying to keep it as dark as possible in there. Okay. Uh, you make yourself a tent. It's not the comfiest bed ever. It's uh, lumpy, old, kind of smells funny, and a little too small, but 
you're able to make yourself a little tent, put on your face mask, curl up underneath everything, and this time between uh, the extra covering, the extra bit of shelter, and the fire at the back of the room, and also two extra um, bodies within the area, you're able to stave off the cold and get some sleep. All right, Kane, your watch passes without incident. You go in and you wake whoever is up next. Calda, perhaps? Yep. Calda's gonna wake up, look at where Malsana said ever before, and just go, okay. Just mumble, I now have to carry the Fort Frostbite. Okay. <laughs> Let's grab, do that watch. It's dark as shit. Good night, Kane. Make sure uh, Kolda's not shivering when she's sleeping. Eh? I'm Kolda. That's Osana. I meant to say Osana. Alright, you, you're you exhausted. Go to bed. Disadvantage perception time. <laughs> Disadvantage perception time. <laughs> Woo! That's a 10. That's a 10. <laughs> Alright. Again, it is a very, very dark out. Um... There's a little bit of, just a little bit of native light filtering through the dimness and the uh, clouds overhead have, to have, have parted just a little bit to allow moon, the moon to shine through. Um, you notice that it's uh, no longer quite full from the brief glimpses you get, but at the very least it's enough light to reflect off of all the fresh snow and... Um, makes it so that it's at least not pitch black outside. Um, but as you watch, it, time passes. You don't really see or hear anything of note. It is silent still. The hours pass. As it grows just a little bit darker before dawn, you go in and you wake whoever is next. Real quick. Yes. What would it take for Alsana to intentionally dream something? It depends on what you're trying to intentionally dream. She's basically trying to, like, as she's fo as she's kind of like drifting off, just kind of yelling uh, Exanthus's name, <laughs> goading him into <laughs> getting a dream sequence. <laughs> what is it with your fucking character? That what do you is, have against the gods? That is sheer force of will making an attempt. Um, raw charisma check. Can she guidance herself on this? Mm. You cannot maintain concentration uh, while yeah. you're asleep. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no, kind of for that reason because it's as you're trying to drift off into sleep, and so. All right. Raw charisma. Yep, raw charisma. Seventeen. Yeah, you uh fall asleep to this mental chant of Exanthus, 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 I know you're out there, come here. Get your godly butt into my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Which is <laughs> Does probably not kind of like, a please phrase. Please tell her to stop tall calling. To be fair, that is probably not a phrase Exanthus is used to hearing even if he received prayers often. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine Alara just basically getting uh, <laughs> this voice shoved into it. It's like, it's your fucking friend. <laughs> Are you <laughs> <laughs> like it's like Lars just like zoops into like the grayscape and Xanthus just has a phone. He's like, "Are you listening to these voicemails?" <laughs> Slowly right. deleting off Asana's voicemails. Yep. yep. And there's just like the small like like narrative of like, "I know you see through that other one's eyes. I know you see me. We can make a deal." <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. Charisma We're about the same things here. Charisma check of 17 is not bad. Uh. <laughs> she, she can't see the room, but she is looking in Alaris' direction. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're curled up, but your face is turned towards the uh, fireplace, which is a little bit of a feat, because that means that your chin is tucked against your chest as you sleep, so there might be a little bit of a little bit of a snore going on. Um. And, uh, you fall asleep to this, 
mental litany, um, and it's one of those things where, you know, you, you know when you are deliberately thinking of something as you sleep and you don't even realize you've fallen asleep? It just, <laughs> it just slides and fades into just darkness and dreams. Um, Alsana, trying fiercely to get the attention of this this god, this uh, figure of oh, myth, legend, death and inevitability, whatever you want to call it. Um, you don't really notice when you go from waking to sleeping, and in a similar way, you don't really notice when your own self-directed, or rather self-created uh, thoughts um, turn from that uh, repetition of Exanthus's name and uh, sort of invocations um, into a smooth and quiet whispering. At first it's like the names, it's like the words that you're thinking, but in your dreams it shifts to other things. It shifts to things that you just can't quite make out, or snatches of conversation that make no sense without context, or or, or else just are meaningless on their own. Um, and you get the sense in your dream that your eyes aren't open, but the space behind them isn't black, it's almost a shifting gray tone. And you hear quiet just between the whispers. A voice say, It's not many who call upon me so deliberately. What do you have to say? There's Child a, of like, the twilight. Mental dream chuckle. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you actually answered. I can't believe it. You were unusually persistent. persistent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like you already. That's god language. Hey, shut the fuck up. I am not called upon by many, as I have said. Most who call out in desperation, do so against me, and at the end. You, however, are seemingly well, and have no reason to cry out. So, you have this one chance. Speak plainly. What do you want? Ooh, Ariel, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> you did it first. Have yep. fun catching up. All right. <sighs> All right. I guess my usual fun won't be suitable here. From what I've said, uh, from what I've heard, sorry, um, from your other compatriot, what you hold and what you represent is... Something I hold a respect for, a deep respect. And you are not one of, one who is part of the usual pantheon of powerful beings that one might serve. You're this... In the same way that you find me an oddity, I find you one. And I am terribly interested. I in no way intend to ask any more of power from you that you've given Alaris, for example, but you seem to be one I would be happy to have an open channel with, and one who I could feel would very much benefit from 
having me in a sort of service. You know, as you've called me, one of Twilight, that I am trained and holder of the values that you claim of yourself. And I'm sure if what's said about us to be true with our powerful fates going forward might be believed, and if you're aware of the current imbalance going on in the world, that it would be a benefit of both of us to at least be in talks, perhaps. You wish for information, but not... I always do. But for you in particular, I'm not one so much as to put myself that much higher than forces of nature and beings like yourself. I would ask for information, perhaps, but also guidance. Perhaps a slight, um... Goodwill, I'd like to build. I don't ask much in return, just a uh, perhaps a humble conversation every now and then. I do not have worshippers or followers. Hmm. I have no clerics or clergy, and I desire none. I have my agent, and you already stand to aid him. So, what purpose do you see in these conversations? Your agent is one of action and combat, yes? He is of many well. things. Are you not of action and combat yourself? I suppose so, but you've given him a crossbow, as that best suits his works and uh, the way he works. No, you assume. He held a crossbow. I infused it, as it was a tool in his hand already. Hmm. Well, if that's the case... And you might know that, um, I see people, talks, stories from oneself, information, guidance, all of that as a tool in my hand. I'm... I am in line already to aid him, but I'm not asking for much, I suppose, if I might be as bold to say so. I'm just asking for the possibility you have a more open dialogue than one might usually have with you. Hmm. So far what I've gotten is second-hand accounts from your agent and and like I, I believe that is all you truly need. Hmm. You don't think I could do better with more? No, I know what you could do with more. I know the vastest limits of your potential. Just as I know that of my agent. And of your two companions. But... 
If you do wish it, there may be a time when you may draw some power from me. It would be your choice, but this contact has been made, so it is now an option. That is in your court, however. And to be frank, you have less need of power from another source than my agent did. You already hold the seeds of restoration for this area, and perhaps for more. I do not see anything else being gained by either of us from this conversation. Someone tries to wake you now. Well, and I thank you for your time, then. The gray goes to black. Just in time for you to feel Calda nudging your shoulder to wake you up for the Come final on. watch. I'm on Fort Frostbite, I'm tired. <laughs> and again, the eyes kind of, like, flutter open and a smile on her face. The eyes are underneath yes. the face mask, as a reminder. Yeah. Yes. She kind of pulls it up. You're smiling. <laughs> what happened? I had a nice chat. Oh, alright. I'm gonna go back to sleep. I'm taking mm. the bed. I am conquering Fort Frostbite. Good night. <laughs> God, we'll just face flying onto the bed. <laughs> the dust that only bones contain float in the air. Hmm. But it is warm given that Alsana just left it. So Yep, that's exactly why she took it. There is that, yeah. She'll kind of get up to go take watch. Gonna pause. Look over Alara sleeping. Give a chuckle and walk out front. All mm. right. Go ahead and do a perception check as All right. you take the last watch. Yes. And just as well, she'll just kind of look up to some more of those lamp vines and just give a tap and. Have a have one glowing at the front, outside. All right, there is now a lamp vine glowing at the front, something which I'm sure Calda would have appreciated before her watch, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. that is past. Yep. All right, guidance, and just kind of rub her face as she's <laughs> looking around. Perception. I love our very average rolls on our perception tonight. Add your D four. That's not average for me, that's a three. Well, okay. Our uh, average for a commoner rolls. Mm. <laughs> thirteen. <laughs> so yeah, thirteen. Okay. Uh, underneath the warm yellow glow of the forced bloom of the lamp vine, you watch the surrounding forest, the low ridge opposite the area up and down this shallow gully. And it passes uneventful. Until finally you see the first lightning of the sky in the distance. And uh, you feel oh. that if it had been a different season and a different forest, you probably would hear birds chirping. And their absence is as unsettling as ever. She'll check the weather report. Alright. For the record, I have now written down the weather for the entire month because I know this is going to continue. Yep, Christ. <laughs> Ariel, I am taking your notes and like an orange over a juicer. Just... <laughs> yep. Getting as much out of them. Yep. <laughs> um... 
It seems like it's going to be another fairly cloudy day, but it looks like there's going to be a break for sunshine at some point. Not that it probably matters too much given the, uh, given the nature of this area. It is now dry day, the 5th of Windhelm. And the day has dawned. And she'll, as, as she hears people getting up, she'll like rush back in and start putting her hair together. Not to be seen. Yep, you rush back in and if you go for the, your tent, you find Calda sacked out inside of it. Eh, she'll go for her bag, probably just right by the bed then. Mm -hmm. I'll need a new bead for my new friend. Hmm. Did she see what he looked like at all? Or was it no, just talk? It was just talk. You got the impression of a voice and always surrounded by whispers. And all you saw was shifting shades of gray. Hmm. You had the impression the entire time in the dream that your eyes were closed, but you couldn't open them. She has the mask. She's used to that. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll have to find a gray one then. And she'll kind of walk over again with a smile on her face and she's like, Oh, Alaris. Yeah? How'd you sleep? Uh, Just out of curiosity. Slept all right. Slept all right. Any, um... Conversations had? No, not that I'm aware. Hmm. Uh, I guess we Why, all. Why did you? <laughs> I'm not telling. She <laughs> just walks over the window and looks out. He's very stern, you know. Yeah, I'm. Although. I take it in my own victory that, well, he turned his eye towards me. Not as much as you, his chosen agent. He spoke fairly highly of you. Did he now? Yes. There was the implication that, well, your crossbow isn't just the source of your power, but merely a tool in your hand. Giving you greater, just letting you realize your full potential. I suppose so. I and, suppose uh, that's true. Supposedly, he knows exactly where each and every one of us uh, will end up in terms of our advancement of our own skills and abilities. Oh, really? He claims it much. Oh, I didn't ask him if I should be telling you this. He didn't say, so I'm going to assume not, but... Uh, next time you talk to him, though, uh, be sure to ask what he thought of me. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he'll know now that. He's probably in both our heads now. Watching over us like a protective father made of grey mist. That is likely... It's a better one than usual. But enough of that. If you never need any um, help in your dreams, uh, just give me a call. I'd love to at least uh, come and watch, maybe. Give you some moral support. Really, I just want to see his face when you ask him that. Mm. Or his face in general, really. Have you, Did you see more? Is it ever more than a voice for you? Have I? Because, like, John the player knows what he looks like. What does uh, Alaris? Alaris has seen him. Not often. He tends to appear behind Alaris and just speak. Sometimes he is just a voice, but you have seen the full figure. Okay. 
Sorry, just give me. So you wanted to know what Exanthus looked like, did you? Ah, it's a curiosity of mine. At least I only got a voice in some gray fog. And some other things, but, well, they're nothing new to me. He's a mostly cloaked figure. I, I've never seen him past the cloak, but... Uh, and I've never really seen his face, per se, but... Oh, man of mystery. Carries us. he... I've seen his hand, which is that of a skeletal nature, and he carries a lantern with a purple flame. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Got nevability of death and all that? Yeah. Hmm. Purple flame, good to know. Is purple his favorite color? I've never asked him, because I didn't think it was right. How long have you been talking to him? A while, but I didn't think I had, I'd had. i had to you, ask You've got a working relationship going date. here. He's my patron, not can, my can girlfriend. <laughs> you can probably hear this. Oh, what, is your wife going to get jealous? Asana. No. Asana. It's my favorite color. I just don't care. Is it green? Is it blue? <laughs> Looks at uh, Connor. Ah, she doesn't care. I won't bother telling. Don't worry. You tell me later. No, but seriously. He just, he just pulls out a handkerchief of a certain color. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> no, but seriously, like... Is it just been the lessons and the ominous statements about the inevitability of death? You've never gotten to know the guy? Or the I've force never, of nature, He's never I talked suppose. to me that long. It's always been less than what feels like <laughs> Oh, well, minutes. maybe he likes me better. There's a lot more to cover for me. Things that I need to learn from him. So I don't really waste time with idle. Ch it's not. You have a working relationship going. So I have to know his favorite color. No, but you seem to imply you know nothing about him, nothing of his personal interests, likes and wants. He wants people to go. He wants people to come to him when the time is right. When when their times come, he they want he wants them to come willingly. They want, he wants people to enter the fold willingly. He doesn't like it when people try to borrow time a la necromancy and and trying to become an immortal. He's not keen on that. Hmm. Well, I don't intend to be around forever either. Have you ever asked him why he has such a vested interest against things like that? I didn't think it was important. You've got you've got yourself in a life pact with this man, and you've not even asked who his parents are. Why would I need to know? Do you, do you know who your wife's parents are? Yes! That's more- because my wife is more important to me than that. Don't hear him saying that. Also, I wouldn't think I'd need to ask my patron who his parents are. Well, he has to come from somewhere. <laughs> hey, Xandria. I'm not gonna <laughs> ask him. Hey, hey, patron. It's Mama Hot. No, 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 <laughs> no. Look, I'm, j I'm just saying, clearly you know the steps because you have a kid of understanding a person and then going into a lifelong pact with them. I'm just surprised you didn't take the sim similar steps with this case. Forgive me, my son was dying. I didn't exactly think things through, but now I'm here and I respect him for the power he's given me and for the guidance he's given me. So, yeah, I kind of, I kind of went 
face first into this into that decision. But that was my. All right. I see. So no, I don't know every working detail about our whole contract and every life and our life pact. But so long as he gives me the ability to keep my son and my wife safe, I'll go through whatever. I'll jump through whatever hoop that I need to. Okay. Let me make that clear. I see. I've stepped on some toes. You've been tap dancing on his feet for five minutes, Osana. Yeah, a lot of lines just stepped across. Look. I'm not questioning your reasonability about making the choice. I want to know more about him. I thought you would as well. He saw I had potential, and I saw that I had the potential to keep my son safe. So I took the so I took his offer. What's more of it? What's more that's needed to be asked? I don't need to know his favorite color. I need to know that he can help me keep my son safe. Death comes to all, you know. And tampering with gods can end up can change where you end up after it comes. I've been made aware of that. And he told me that it wasn't Gage's time. And I was thankful for that. We're all on borrowed time, Alsana. It's just, it's dependent on how much borrowed time we're... Mm. And the time after that? Will you your wife and child go with you to the fold? Exanthus decides where we go. Mm. He's the gatekeeper. He... So, whether or not I end up in some paradise or burning in some circle of the nine hells, it doesn't matter to me so long as my... So long as while I'm living... And while my son is living there, safe. Well, she gets up. There certainly need to be more fathers like you out there. Thank you. But seriously, my guess is purple. And she walks out the door. Alright, you walk out. The tent is still sitting there from the previous night. Yep, and she'll start rolling it up. Everybody else, uh, you've got your bedrolls to pack. You've got whatever uh, utensils or items you pulled out for the staying the night to pack up. and. Uh, rations perhaps to share out. It seems that Kane has made a uh, made a kettle of tea because he's either that or he was pretending to be sipping on tea listening to all of that according to the chat. Well, he may be. <laughs> Even if it's just pine needles it's tea. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah you can have some uh, tea of the forest I guess. However that might taste. It tastes like sap. <laughs> Tastes like maple syrup. Nope. Just sap. Uh, sap is a whole other thing. Okay. <laughs> so, after the uh, unexpected confrontations of the morning, you pack everything up, get ready to go, head outside. Alsana's there uh, with the tent uh, now folded and put away and a lamp vine is hanging from the rafters shining a little more faintly apparently in just the uh, comparative brightness of a, a dawning day even though it is still dim but there is a warm yellow glow 
the same as there is inside the hut from the lamp vine that she'd bloomed earlier that previous night. I think we'll return here at some point. I want to plant a tree here. This looks really nice. I'd like to uh, liven it up a bit more. We can meet up in a few years. Ah, well, we have time after, before and after the ritual anyways. You are right. But, for now, we have some birch to follow. Alright, and on that, uh, one person can do a survival check, everybody else do perception. Just to keep an eye out as you travel along. I'm, I'm actually eating, so I don't have access to my computer. Can someone make a perception check for me? Yeah. I'll do survival with my host again. Okay. Does Osana um, have, have, it, does it, have it, any sort of easier time with her, like, nature knowledge? Hmm. If Alsana does the survival check, I'll keep it in mind. More so for the perception and just, like, knowing exactly where the birch trees are going. Uh, the birch trees would be the survival check. Perception is keeping a watch out in case there's anything of interest or anything uh, tries to uh, okay. do on the way. Um, okay. What's what's everyone else's bonus to survival? Plus four. No. And what's a uh, Alaris? I don't actually have it on hand. So, uh, what, what's his wisdom? Uh, plus one, I believe. All okay, right. I think I think you and Alaris have the same survival. Yeah. Oh, we met, yeah, I have plus four because I'm proficient. Yep. Uh, in that case, Alsana will do it. Okay. Yep. Um, but she'll guidance herself first. She also has plus four, but she's not proficient. Oh. That's I'll drop a good roll. And a one. Twenty-one. And 22 perception from Kane, 8 perception from Calda. Um, is Alaris proficient in perception? I don't think so, no. Then I'll so roll plus... a d20 plus 1. You got a 15. Okay, cool. Okay, so 21 survival. Uh, that is enough for Alsana to uh, get out there and... You start heading north. You don't notice any birch trees immediately in the area. Um, but as you begin to head north, uh, as you're looking around, trying to figure out the way, um, going, yes, we're heading this direction, maybe this direction, but, uh, in the meantime, I need to find, oh, there's one. It's this slender, pale trunk, almost invisible against the snow, just for the, um, the sheer paper white of its bark. And you head towards it, and you look around, and you see another one just a little bit further on. You go towards that, you see another, and then another. And tree by tree, you follow the way. Called in she'll just kind of, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, just a small thing as she passes, she'll just take a, some of the um, bark, the peel-off bark from one of them. Alright, you've peeled off a little bit of birch bark. Mm -hmm. Thin and papery and very cold in your hand, given time of year as ever. Mm -hmm. uh, Calda, you're not really noticing very much. You're uh, kind of keeping up with uh, everybody, but having to focus a great deal on trudging through some of the snow is um, perhaps this area you're passing through has a lot more drifts that you have to be concerned with. Um, Elaris is keeping a good eye out in case anything comes upon you. Uh, Kane, you actually spot one or two of the, uh, once you find out that Alsana seems to be going for these very particular types of trees, you're actually able to point out one or two before she sees them as, uh, she stops, looks around, and you go, Oh, is, is that the next one? Is that one? Uh, just because your perception is good enough that you're able to um, pick up skinny white trees. Oh, there's another one. Um, just realized I was a birch. Good to... Yeah. 
You have you have learned a thing potentially, as assuming you've remembered the word birch tree from the day before. Um, but other than that, you don't really see anything else in the forest. No odd lights. Uh, no movement. Uh, not even any suspicious piles of vines in the snow. Everything is very, very quiet. And you walk tree to tree for a full hour. And then for another one. And, uh,. Time marches on as you march on through the snow. You may occasionally take a brief break in order to uh, knock some snow out of boots or give legs a little bit of a rest from the constant trudging. Or just stretch from sitting on the broom. <laughs> or stretch from sitting on the broom. Uh, <laughs> Alsana might give Calda a ride occasionally if the drifts get too heavy. <laughs> yes, it's uh, probably better than the trudging, but I will say that a few hours on the broom uh, it starts to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. She kind of like swaps positions. Yep. You side saddle yeah. one way, side saddle the other. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually, you see ahead of you, not just one birch tree, but not quite a row of them. It's too staggered and uneven and curving for that. Almost a... the edge of what might be a rough circle or semicircle, or at the very least a curve of them. And you approach that, and you see uh, down a short slope, and nestled into a cut in the ground, wide and broad, a pool of dark water, with standing stones scattered amongst it, and a single taller stone towards its center. And there's a hole in the stone, and from that hole seems to be trickling a constant stream of water. You can hear it. It's not frozen, despite the distinct chill in the air and the snow on the ground. The water just continues to flow into the pool. You don't see any streams, you don't see anywhere for the water to flow out, and yet it seems level inside of its depression in the ground. And on the ridge, just behind that pool and that stone, you see a massive twisted, gnarled tree. Seems almost made of just knots and corded uh, bark, and the roots that straggle across the ground and break through the bottom of the ridge to dip into the water itself. There are gnarled, twisted branches twining around each other, spreading into the sky, and almost over the entirety of this grove. The grove is indeed surrounded by birch trees against the massive bulk of this enormous tree in the center. They almost look skeletal. They look spindly and weak, more like twigs planted around the circumference of an area, by contrast. Everything is silent and still aside from the trickling water. And you see wound around each of those birch trees, the blackened remains of vines. Not just the dullness of vines gone dormant for the winter, but twisted and shriveled and completely dead. You walk closer, it's still quiet, yes. So sun to notice the type of vines. You pull up close. Um, you take a look. You don't even need a check at this point. You're pretty sure these were lamp vine. Mm. Um. Alsana, um, 
Sorry. Uh, you've got a high passive perception, correct? Seventeen, yes. Yes. You in particular, um, distant and faint, hear a, f a small rise of whispers. You shake your head and they seem to clear up, though. But for just a moment, you thought you could hear something. Is this her usual kind, or is it... It is the usual kind, uh... Go ahead and roll and uh... Roll a wisdom check. She guides herself for that. Because she's, like, trying As to hone in on what it is. Uh, since you're trying specifically to hone in on something, go ahead. Alright. Just raw wisdom? Yeah, raw wisdom. You're just trying to figure something out. Yeah. Nine plus your d4. One. Ten. Ten. Uh, yeah. You focus, you listen, you try to pick out what you're hearing. Nothing specific, just more faint on the edge of any perception whispers. You can't even make out for sure if they are actually voices, per se, or if it's just something similar to the rustle of leaves, but despite the fact that everything is bare and there's no wind. There's something here. There's something restless here. Woken up, or to be put back to sleep? I'm not sure. Uh, she's going to walk over to Alaris. Uh, does he have a... He has a quiver on him, right? He at very like least a has a bolt case. Yeah. Yep. Uh, she's going to walk over. She's going to cast flame arrows on him. Oh. get the feeling we're gonna get more plants types. Consider this a um inauguration of my mm, budding relationship with Exactus. Mm, she'll just have kind of turn back. Well as far as I can tell, that horrid looking tree is our target. Can she tell at all, like, the type of tree that's in the middle? Like, is it natural at all? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see. Like, kind of the difference between I don't know what this tree is and there's not a tree like this, I guess? Yeah, I am not quite sure what skill specifically to have you roll, so I'm gonna say this. Roll something that is your intelligence plus your proficiency modifier. Alright. I'll go with nature then. Okay. And guidance, of course. Of course. Bloody 20, natural 20, 26. Give me the d4. 3, 29. 29. Bloody hell. Um, <laughs> you very nearly rolled godlike, okay? <laughs> 30 is kind of the impossible tier. You start Thank getting you, a, this. You, <laughs> ah, you can attribute it to what you will. But as you're looking at this tree, as you're edging closer, um, almost drawn by those faint surges of whispers that you can hear and trying to figure them out, you step a little closer and uh, enter the grove itself, just past the hedge of uh, trees. Um, and it's not that the grove is empty, aside from the giant tree in the pool. There are a couple more um, trees within, but smaller, more spindly. Um, and you, uh, you give this massive trunk a thorough examination. You start to wonder, wait, there, there's something about this. There's something, I, I must have read something. This looks like this, feels like a thing. There's something to do with the blight tied to 
a particular tree and finally something snaps, something clicks in your head and you start piecing it all together. The blight, the undead, the things from uh, the shadow fell and its far reaches, the uh, even just the idea of death itself having any kind of hold or even losing a hold in this area and you remember reading something about a legendary type of tree rare that comes from the place of death and destruction and it's called the Golthias tree it's said to have been grown or born or created perhaps from Maybe the blood, maybe the body of a vampire. It's said that once it takes root somewhere, it begins to infect an area, taint it, draw it towards death itself, and twist life, and especially plant life, into things like it. Things that try to bring death and spread its will and its power further and further into the area. This, you're fairly sure, is one of those trees. And as you uh, draw into the clearing and the party behind you, you're able to go towards it, you're able to face it. It is still, it doesn't move, it doesn't... It doesn't act in any way. There is no speech. You know that there's no true intelligence, per se, behind it. It's just a force of nature, albeit twisted and wrong. However, Something else does move, and does act. Something else that is also, from your knowledge, very twisted and wrong. As the pool, though shallow, the waters bubble and part before the stone. And something rises from it, just at first just a slender point and a shaft, followed by a head, a neck, and a body, black as night, with burning red eyes. The hoof falls on the snowy shore, then another. And it steps out fully. A large unicorn, its coat sooty black, and glares at you. Bears yellow teeth, and it screams. And you have found the master of the forest. Oh, fuck. And we're going to go ahead and end it there for today. Ah, because combat would be course. excellent. It would take too long. Mm. Of course. Oh, of course. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Can I get a type out of that kind of tree? Yes, you can. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'll uh, write it down for you for your notes as well. Or for memory. Gulthias tree. Gulthias. Oh, that's easy. It could be okay. Golfias, but I went with Golfias. So, there you have it. Oh, 2,500 words, Ariel. <laughs> oh my. You're being thorough. Thorough. Right. Oh. Okay. And um, that, that's, a, that, that's including the spat between the... Uh, Alaris and Delsana, apparently. That yeah, was that, that happened. of words. Yeah, no, but when that, I started yeah, describing stuff, when I started describing stuff, I went word for word with what you were saying. Oh my god. Alright. Oh my god. Uh, I'll go ahead and stop recording. I don't think there's anything else that really needs to be said just now. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, I hope you're prepared. Thank you, Xanthus, for that almost nine, uh, almost thirty. <laughs> if I got oh. a thirty, would you have, like, let me know something? Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> I am not sure, but you probably would have known this thing's exact weaknesses or strengths or whatever it might be <laughs> um, at that point. You got pretty close. I just dumped lore on you. 
You're good at that. Alsana's good at that, getting that out of Such a the DM. Such a beautiful lore dump. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's good, though. Also, did any... Also, did anyone else take notes, or do I have to refine these for next week's recap? I still can't type, so... I can't take notes because they might get deleted. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna refine yeah. these. Yeah, yeah, just a... Start time. A mentally break it down into a small summary. Yeah, I might I know there's like... break down. I'm great at those. Yeah, there's like two and a half pages that is just Renala's stuff, so I'm not really gonna go in-depth about all that. That's just for lore ref. Then I can just keep going from there. <laughs> if I do, um... Oh, sorry, when I do get my laptop nice and going good, I might just re-watch this episode and take notes. <laughs> yeah, I hope everything well, is... Send... I hope everything's audible. Mm -hmm. I'll, send, I'll send you my PDF, too, if you need it. Alright. Okay, so, we'll go ahead and stop recording. Mm -hmm. Until next Until time. Until next time. We gotta fight. Until next time.